YouTube is your boy Thomas back again with another rendition of Truth Be Told. Now, this week there wasn't really any anything major going on in the news. Same old shit. Just another day. Uh, but the Democrats are fucking they're scared as fuck because they know they're fucked. They're losing their power. People are seeing their lies and all that bullshit. Even though they're Democrats, so. Shit's going downhill for them. Anyways, uh, I wanted to touch base with you. Last uh, video, I talked about Naked and Afraid and Alone. TV shows. Uh, I keep watching the Alone series. Uh, I didn't think I was going to keep watching it, but I keep watching it because I find it interesting watching them. Uh, some of the innovation from some of the people that are cast on the show, what they can make out of wood and shit, you know. So I find that interesting. It's got you know, crafting shit, just, crafting's interesting to me. I can't do it, but I, I enjoy watching other people come up with shit that you're going, oh, yeah, I guess you could do that, you know. Um, I, I just got done watching season three, so I'm just touching base. Um, the th Three of them tried to star themselves towards the end to win. Uh, they they got really dangerous because they were just starving themselves. They weren't trying to find anything to eat, really. And that's the my biggest problem with the one of the biggest problems I have with the show, which I explained in the last video. Like they claim they're survival experts because they go out hunting or fucking, you know, go camping or something for a couple hours or some shit. They go, hey, I'm a survival expert. No, you're fucking not. You have no idea what the fuck you're doing. In the world today, most people would not be able to survive in the wilderness because they've been pampered. They've got too much shit. Uh, luxury living, you know, the, Everything's fucking, they just go buy it, you know. They ain't got to work for it. They ain't got to earn it. They just go buy it. You know, fast food and all that kind of crap. They don't know how to fucking, you know, build a shelter or fucking go foraging or, you know, hunting. And that kind of, they just don't know how to do it anymore. Mankind's fucking lost their ability to do that shit and survive. Now, granted, there are a few places in the world where people still know how to do, really, I mean, really know how to do that and survive. You still got tribes in Africa and shit like that, you know, certain remote places. But vast majority of people in this world, nope, they'd all die because they do not know how to survive in the wilderness. Um, I, I, I kind of like this season, season three, because they got away from that stupid ass fucking location, Vancouver Island, British Columbia. There's, I, you know, I understand exactly why people don't like being there. I mean, it's fucking freezing ass cold. 
It's raining almost non-stop. Everything's fucking wet. Everything's much. You can't get a fire started, supposedly. Because everything's so fucking wet. There's nothing dry. The fish... The fish dry up within the first week or two because fucking it gets so cold they stick to the middle of the fucking waters you know they they don't come near the shore anymore so they can't fish for anything they don't know how to hunt uh they make the dumbest fu i've not seen them make one decent trap it's all piddly ass traps and shit so they don't know how to hunt uh, they can't take a bow. They can't take, you know, a rifle. Well, I take that back. I think they did have a bow. One or two of them had a bow. But they never use it, really use it. Uh, but, yeah. that's They bitch and moan about food constantly. Yet they don't know how to get any fucking food. They rely too much on fishing. And you can't just rely on fishing. Because the fish don't bite in the fucking cold hardly, you know. So you got to find some other food source. And that's what they bitch about the most. Uh, either that or they can't start a fire. Now, they went somewhere to South America near Chile. It's like some pan... Goria place is what it's called. I don't, I can't remember exactly. It started with a P. Pan, Pandoria or some shit like that. But anyways, I would have, I'd rather much be on this, in this area, even though it's still fucking freezing ass cold and wet a lot. Most of their days were dry. Not wet. Cold, but not wet. So yeah, I'd rather be in this area. Now, I get it. Yo, know, they want to put them in these extreme harsh locations, conditions, you know, and try to survive. I get that. But fuck, you could put them in a desert or something for once. Get them the fuck away from that stupid Vancouver Island. That's the worst fucking place. Now, it does no good that if you like season three because they're down South America. Because guess what they do in season four? Yep, they go right back to that fucking stupid Vancouver Island. Really? You can't find a different location? You can't put them in a, like the Sahara Desert somewhere or some shit? Where fucking they have to try to survive in a desert where it's nice and fucking warm. I'd much rather be taking my clothes off and dipping in a pool of water or a lake bed or a pond or some shit than fucking freezing my fucking ass off. More people die from cold extremes than they do fucking heat strokes. Anyways. Yeah, this season, they three of them tried to kill themselves by starving to death. Like, they just gave up trying to fucking find food. It was ridiculous. One guy, he fucking... He, dude, he had all this fish smoked and wouldn't need it. He just starved himself. Because he thought, well, I just... You know, I'll save it. Well, he just kept saving it and saving it and saving it. He wouldn't eat it. He just starved himself. Oh, I can't find any food. Blah, blah, blah. Motherfucker, you've got a shit ton of food sitting there. You don't eat it. It's dumb. It's dumb. And then, you know, he got knocked out. Because he starved himself. Stupid. Anyways. Uh... This one was a little bit better in the first two seasons because they were in a different location. But I just started season four and it, they changed the rules 
uh, you know, it's teams now, and to, for fuck's sake, the right, like I said, the right back on that fucking Vancouver fucking island. Stop fucking showing that fucking location. Go somewhere else. Fuck. I can't stand that place that they're in. It's dumb. Uh, anyways. That's my update. Season 3 is a lot better than the first two. Because it's not at Vancouver fucking Island. Okay. So... Moving on, I just got done watching the fourth installment uh, of Bad Boys, which is like ride or die. Dude, Martin Lawrence, that motherfucker has got to be a pudgy fat bastard. I mean, you can just see he's all puffy looking and shit. He can, he can barely look, look through his eyes because he's so puffy. Um, those two are fucking getting old, old, old. Uh, you can see it in, in Will Smith's face. He's old. Uh, but anyways, um, the whole movie centers around the captain dying, and he found that there's some corrupt cops or whatever, so they're trying to finish what he started. Blah, blah, blah. You know. Uh, they find some... They have to fight some fucking... Dumb mercenary. To, like... It wasn't even a really good bad guy. Uh, but... Uh, the show was okay. I mean, it was just... Yeah, oh, and uh, Will Smith's character, Michael. He finally gets married. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, it's just the show was okay. It was all right for a one-time watch. It wasn't. It was okay. But other than that, it was just kind of mid. It was just eh. Okay, something to watch. But other than that, eh. I give it a thumbs up and a thumbs down. It was okay. It's it's probably the worst of the series. To be honest, it's not nearly as good as the first three. <clears throat> it's just okay. Check it out if you want, though. Up to you. That's just my opinion on it. Okay, let's get on to your B-movie reviews. Movie Holics. This week is Fantasy Week. I normally don't go past two thousands. Uh, it's rare, but I do occasionally. Uh, with fantasy, it's a lot harder to find older fantasy movies. Uh, they just didn't make it, a whole bunch of them. Um, 
But uh, I went ahead and watched Peter Jackson's King Kong, which was done in 2005. <clears throat> and it made about 600 mil worldwide. And it starred Jack Black and Naomi Watts. Um, basically, it's just a retelling of the original King Kong. With a couple other added scenes in it. Like when they get to Skull Island. You know they show the scenes where. They have to fight the giant insects. And the dinosaurs. And yada yada yada. Uh, of course Naomi Watts character. She eventually starts feeling for King Kong. At first she was freaking out at, about him. But then later on she starts having feelings for him. <coughs> Excuse me. Like, she starts to care about him. Um, Jack Black, of course, plays this guy who's trying to uh, produce a movie. And he gets his whole camera, or not camera, but his whole crew. The camera guy, the sound guy, the uh, his assistant, all that. He basically, well, no, the assistant made it. He gets uh, several people killed trying to make this movie including a bunch of the the guys from the uh, the boat you know the captain and his crew from the boat they all, a bunch of them get killed what I don't understand is how come the boat captain has like a shit ton of guns like he they have a ton of guns but a bunch of them get killed trying to rescue Na Naomi Watts from King Kong because he takes her on the island. Uh, of course, they get back. Uh, Jack Black puts him on for a show. And then a bunch of people get killed at, towards the end because King Kong's running around the city looking for Naomi Watts. When he does find her, of course, he climbs up the Empire State Building. Uh, the army comes in and basically shoots him down and kills him. And that's the end of the movie. Um, uh, it's a good movie. I like King Kong. Uh, way, way better than I do Godzilla. Godzilla's okay, but King Kong's ten times better. And it literally says King in his name. Because he is the king of monsters. Not Godzilla. I don't care what they fucking try to tell you. Godzilla is not the... King Kong... Fucking slaughter Godzilla. That stupid Kong versus Godzilla. And then Kong beats his ass... Or Godzilla beats his... King Kong's ass is bullshit. Anyway, um, King Kong, excellent movie, two thumbs up, Peter Jackson does a good job, uh, you know, he did Lord of the Rings, of course, so, um, moving on to the next one, uh, the next one I watched was Jack the Giant Slayer, now, They've done a few other versions of this uh, all the way back to like the 1920s, I believe, was the original. But it's always been called Jack the Giant Killer, not Slayer. So they changed it for this latest version and called it Slayer. That was done in 2013 and it made about 200 million worldwide. It starred N Nicholas Hunt. And Eleanor Tomlinson. Um, basically, he gets the magic beans. The magic beans grow up to a giant beanstalk that goes to this hidden uh, mythical realm uh, in the sky. That's basically the giant's homeland. Giants want to come down. Kill the humans, eat them. Um, J 
Jack, at some point in time early in the movie, gets a hold of these beans from a monk. They're supposed to be magic beans. Well, this there's a lord in the castle, not the king, a lord who's uh, been promised the hand of the princess by the king. Uh, he got a hold of the beans and there's a crown that allows an ancient crown or something from an ancient king that allows you know the wearer of the crown to control the giants now he has both of them the monk stole the beans but didn't get the crown well he gives the beans to Jack and Jack he tells him don't get them wet. Jack ends up getting one of the beans wet because of the storm. And a beanstalk grows just as the princess was running from the castle because she just wanted to get out. Um, and she ends up in Giant Man. Now Jack in, joins the king's men going up the beanstalk to get her back well the lord went with him the guy who has the crown i can't remember his name but he goes with him so yeah the lord goes with him he's got the crown with him they get up to the top of the beanstalk uh they split off looking for the princess three of them one way three of them the other they, of course, run across the giants. The giants capture them all. But the Lord, he busts out the crown and takes over the giants. While they kill pretty much just about everybody else. Except for Jack, the princess, and even McGregor, who plays, like, the captain of the king's guard or whatever. But everyone else is dead. Uh... Jack and the princess work their, find a way to work their way down the beanstalk. And even McGregor, he stays behind to kill the Lord. Well, when he does so, the giants end up getting a hold of the crown. Uh, now the king down below, he cuts down the beanstalk. Uh, because he knows about the giants. Uh... The princess and Jack uh, miraculously survived the beanstalk crash. And, uh, you know, she goes back to the king. Everything seems to be fine. She tells him what happened up, you know, how the Lord betrayed him and all that kind of shit. But anyways, uh, the giant's fine the bag of beans that the Lord was carrying that he got back from Jack and then he throws them into the water creates more beanstalks so they go down to kill the humans and eat them um, Jack gives chase to the princess and the key and tries to warn him uh, even McGregor's character he makes it back down to near the castle they all get to the castle uh, the giants are trying to kill them take the castle um, the general of the giants he they thought he died by he falls into the the oil pit around the moat or whatever the castle but he ends up going inside underground the castle and coming out trying to kill the princess and Jack. But he ends up getting killed himself. And then, because uh, Jack had one magical bean left, he throws it down his throat, which grows a beanstalk inside the general giant and kills him. So Jack now has the crown. He comes out and he stops the giants. And I guess sends him home. 
And then, um, of course, him and the princess get together, you know, become king and queen eventually. And, you know, happy ever after ending. You know, and then it uh, fast forwards to the future, to our time. And they show how the crown was hidden by making it a, a English royal crown with jewels all on top of it and blah, blah, blah. And no one knows about it. And it's in a museum. And that's pretty much the end of the movie. Uh, it's okay. It's decent for a fantasy flick. You just have to get past the horrible CGI. There is a lot of bad CGI at the beginning of this movie. Later on, the CGI is okay, but you can still tell it's CG all the giants are CGI'd. But the, the CGI at the beginning is really bad. It looks like an old PS1 CGI. You know, shit. <laughs> but other than that, yo, know, yeah, some decent actors. Uh, the story was good. Uh, like I said, it's been retold like three or four times uh, in movies. Definitely check it out. Two thumbs up. And that's all I have for you this week on Fantasy Week. If you can think of anything I talked about earlier in the video, you have any thoughts, please leave your thoughts down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you can think of any B-rated or underrated movies you think I've never even heard of or seen, please leave your comment. Especially horror flicks. I keep seeing all the... I never did get into horror. But I see a bunch of horror flicks I've never even heard of or seen or whatever. And I tend to get into a bunch of them. I just haven't done it yet. But yeah, if you could think of anything, go ahead and leave your suggestions down in the comment section down below. I'll get to reviewing them as soon as I can. Uh, so until next time, I told you to be told the truth. And you just been told.